Hello. Welcome to the video. In this lesson, we're looking at section 6.2, uh, where we're looking at uh, radicals and rational exponents. So the term radicals. It's a new term, radicals. Most of you guys have seen square root, like square root of 4. Square root of 4 is an example of a radical. And there are other uh, types of radicals. There are cube roots. There are fourth roots, fifth roots, and so on and so forth. So anytime they take a value to it, whatever root it is, it is classified as a radical. Radicals can also become a rational exponent. Rational exponent means that more often than not, it's going to be a fraction. doesn't say that it can't be an integer as well, but most of the time when you're dealing with rational exponents, you're dealing with fractions. So looking at it as a fraction, the square root of 4 is the same thing as 4 to the one-half power. This is exactly the same. Square root of 4, 4 to the one-half power is exactly the same. So looking at the, the cube root one, so if I add cube root of 4, that is going to be equal to 4 to the one-third power. This is exactly the same. So as long as you can keep that in mind, this will actually help you. There are some there's some instances where not everybody has the capabilities on their calculator to uh, discover what cube roots and fourth roots and fifth roots are. So this is another way that you can write this in your calculator in order to evaluate those particular either radicals or rational exponents. One of the things that we have to keep in mind when we're looking at root values is, is our root value an even root or an odd root? Because that'll change things. Here it says real nth roots of A. So essentially, you're looking at it like this. So whatever N is, that's the root of it. And then what is inside the root, they're calling A. So if N is an odd number, so it's, it's like cube roots, fifth roots, seventh roots, ninth roots, whatever. And they're saying that if it's an odd A has one real nth root. So whatever A is, so if you notice here, oh, look, it's the one over N. That's what we were talking about previous. So like if it was the you know, cube root of four, it's the same as four to the one third. That's kind of what we were talking about in this particular instance. And if n is even, what you have to keep in mind is that you could have a positive or negative result for that nth root. Here's an example. We all agree that if I took 
2 and raised it to the second power, I would get 4. But most people don't uh, recall, but if I took 2, negative 2, and raised to the second power, I would also get 4. So when I look here and I, I look at the square root of 4, what they are saying is, is since I have an even root, which is 2, even though they don't write it on there, it's 2, that means that my result here is going to be both positive and negative 2. The reason why it's both positive and negative 2, that's what they're talking about here, is because I can get positive 4 whether I raised to the second power from positive 2 or I raise the second power negative 2. And that works when you have an even root. Doesn't doesn't work with an odd root, but it works with an even root. Other things that even roots come into play, if you have it at, if your value of a equals 0, it's just 0. If your uh, value of a is less than 0, you get no real nth root. So if I had like the square root of negative four, and then this is in this case my root is even, this is going to be equal to no solution. If you ever type this in on your calculator, you may get something like domain error or syntax error or some kind of error code will be placed on your calculator. And you're like, why can't I do that? Well, you can't do that is because there's no real solution. There are solutions for odd negative values. So like for instance, if I wrote in the cube root of negative 27, this is going to be negative three. So whatever that is, whatever the uh, sign is for odd roots is what the sign is going to be. So if it was positive, your result is positive. If it's negative, your result is negative. If it's zero, your result is zero. That works for even and odd. So the one thing I do want to keep in mind is this. So if your if your root is odd and you got well we'll just We'll just use third power. So let's say, so third root. So I got a third root of A, and A is positive. You're going to get a positive result. If you have A and it's, let's say, 0. Actually, instead of putting A, I'll just put 0. It's going to equal 0. And if you have a negative value for A, it is going to be a negative result. All right. Now, if I have an even root, and let's just say I use fourth, a fourth root value, and it's going to be positive. Remember, it's going to be a both the positive and negative result of whatever the fourth root of A is. So remember, you got to tag on that plus or minus. If I have 0, it's going to be equal to 0. If I have a negative value for A, this one is no solution. That is what the main thing that you need to take from that chart up there. So in this particular example, it says find the indicated real nth root of A. So here I have, they're saying n is 3 and A is negative 27. So again, this is the general form. So that means that in, in this particular instance, it's going to be the cube root of negative 27, which actually I, I just did. And then that is going to be negative 3. It's odd in my... Uh, value in there is negative. Since it's odd, it's going to be a negative result. In this case, it was going to be negative 3. I look here, and this is going to be the fourth root of 16. Now, because it's an even radical or an even root, I got to be dealing with both the positive and negative. And if you don't have 
the capabilities on your calculator, right? This this is the same thing as 16 to the one fourth power, and 16 to the one fourth power is going to be two. But you remember, you have to take into account both the positive and negative two. Your calculator won't do that. You have to do that on your own. So again, looking at this one here, I got the third root of negative 125, negative 125 to the one third power is going to be negative 5 because it's a negative value. Here I got the sixth root of 64. Again, it's even, and this is positive. It's both positive and negative. I get both plus or minus 2. OK, so now here we have, if they're asking us to evaluate the expression. In this one, we have the negative is on the inside. So this is just going to be negative 2 because, again, this is the same thing as negative 8 raised to the 1 third power. Uh, this one here is going to be 2, but then the, the negative is on the outside, so that just gets tagged, and that's negative 2. Uh, 16 to the 1 fourth power. Again, that's just like the fourth root of 16. And what you have to uh, take into account is this is just two. The reason why it's just two is because they put in the radical or they put in the exponent. If we put in the radical or if we put in the exponent, we have to take into account positive and negative. I understand that's very confusing. Hopefully with practice, it becomes more clear. And then finally for part D, this is the same thing as the fourth root of negative 16. I have a negative uh, value inside my even root. This one's no solution. And then uh, the final uh, concept that they want you to look at is with regards to uh, rational exponents, more specifically fractional exponents. So if I have a fractional exponent, this is uh, kind of how it gets portrayed. The numerator is what the power gets raised by. And then the denominator value is what the root value is. So like in numerical terms, 27 to the 2 thirds power is essentially the cube root of 27 squared. Now, I wouldn't necessarily use that in that form, but it is uh, a way of understanding um, how we write those in and more importantly it kind of is an indicator of what sign it is so here they want us to evaluate uh what 16 to the three fourths power so 16 to the three fourths power is essentially i would just write this in you know, sometimes in your calculator, it'll like you have this little piece here and just write it into three fourths power. And 16 to the three fourths power is going to be eight. For 27, again, 27, raise that to the four thirds power. That is going to be equal to 81. So here, 
evaluating these different expressions, I really want to look at is something like uh, a value like number four. So usually where where it becomes important to uh, establish where uh, things are located with with respect to the fraction is when you have a negative number. I got a negative 64 as my base. What I need to do is I need to look at my denominator value. My denominator value just so happens to be odd. Because it's an odd number, I know that I'm going to get a solution. I'm going to get a solution. Because I can get a solution for an odd root. If it was even, I couldn't. I would get no solution. So here, this is going to be, you know, negative six, negative sixty-four, raising it to the two-thirds power, and this is going to be a positive sixteen. Because if you think about it, I got the cube root of sixty-four, and then it becomes squared. Because what is the cube root of a negative? Sixty-four, and that gives me negative four. Now I got negative four squared. What's negative four squared? Negative four times negative four is positive sixteen. So that's where that comes in. I should let's see where. Okay, something like. If you had something like this, let's say, let's say you had negative 64 and it was going to be raised to the 3 eighths power. So, what you're going to do is say, okay, well, this is the eighth root of negative 64. Because this is an even root and it's got a negative number, it's automatically no solution. Despite what it's being raised by here, that is an indicator. So, this is an entirely different example of depicting these radical, um, irrational exponents. And again, it takes a lot of practice. Please, uh, if you have questions, um, please let me know. And that is uh, being able to look at radicals and rational exponents. Hope this helps. Until next time. time.